Hello fellow modders. Welcome to more modification of the custom 12 gauge. Today we're going to focus on replacing these operational amplifiers. I see one and two. So I emailed custom, actually their parent company, I forget what their name is right now, but I got a response. I emailed them requesting a schematic and sure enough, Lo and behold, they sent me the schematic, and the layout, and the BOM. I'll share it in the description. It's excellent. So what I want to focus on today is upgrading, essentially upgrading these operational amplifiers on the front end here. Mainly focusing on ICs 1 and 2, uh, because at the moment I only have uh, two dual op amps that are going to work right. Um, I'll order more. Also looking to replace IC3 uh, A and B, uh, which is after the clipping part of the circuit. But today we're going to focus on improving this clipping part of the circuit here. So what I want to do is get in here, I'll pull this board out, I'll remove ICs 1 and 2, and then also remove these uh, diodes that have been installed for clipping and as you can see on the schematic and I'll show the schematic uh, with a screenshot as well uh, these four diodes here there's uh, two in series and they're in parallel with each other uh, these are providing the clipping for the majority of the or the majority of the distortion the majority of the clipping uh, it's considered hard clipping there's also this feedback diode um, that I believe is going to provide some clipping in the first stage of the preamp. Um, but what we'll do, we'll stick a oscilloscope on there and we'll see what our signals look like. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to feed the input with just the sine wave and then start experimenting with just adjusting and capturing the sine wave on an oscilloscope as it is with the stock circuit so we get a baseline and then later on we will compare that to what the the, the waveform looks like with clipping uh, after the mods are complete. So as you can see I've already removed the chassis from the cabinet and right now what I'll do is this is not plugged in at the moment to the outlet and I'd like to show you how to remove the PC board from the chassis. Not too complicated, uh, but there's a few screws to remove. And of course all the, these potentiometer nuts. But fairly easy, relatively easy. Um, all of these knobs just pull straight off. So these are what, what is called a, a D-shaft. Let's get in there a little better, a little closer. Close I'm gonna get right now. So all these are the same. They just pull straight off. And I've already had this disassembled. Uh, I just kind of put it back together for demonstration. So most of these nuts on the potentiometers are already pulled off. But yeah, it's just pull straight off those aside, at least one of you suggested that change the knobs on this, and I think I will. I think I'm going to make it a surprise. So uh, look for that in the future. Thing is going to get different knobs. So as far as pulling the, the nuts off the potentiometers, um, usually what I use is just an adjustable wrench. Uh, you could find a nut driver of the exact size, um, but I found it easier just to just to find an adjustable wrench. All I need to do is loosen it a little bit, and then shake them right off. That and there's usually a washer. So put that aside in a Ziploc bag, so you lose any of the hardware. Let's see, I had the one. Then uh, the input jack 
also a similar nut. Some of these are different. This one's kind of on the cheap side, being uh, it's a plastic jack, um, but the looks like the nut is metal. So we have all the pots. Uh, the nuts are off. Now this one. See, I'll show you the where the power connects to it. So again, similar to the speaker, these are spade connectors. They just pull straight off. I usually try to support the board while I pull these off so I don't break any of the traces or crack the board. Those pull straight off. And then audio output, that just pulls straight off, maybe, no, it's this one. So this looks like a connector, but it's actually not. This is soldered to the board, it comes off here. So there's the audio, and then the output on this, the output solid state amp, is this power operational amplifier there. It's attached to the heat sink, which also doubles as the mount for the back of the PC board. That just uh, already took one of these screws out. There's the other one. Put a little Loctite on there, but it's no match for a decent screwdriver. And then this should just pop right out. And they really didn't waste a lot of space here, so at least in, be in between getting the board in here. Left to right, there's a lot of space, but front and back, not, not much left. And then there's a ground connection here. So that connects the ground of the PC board to the chassis, which is earth ground. Most of these are going to be earth, or, and also zero volts or negative ground. So we'll put the chassis aside for now. And now we can get to the everything on the PC board. So a little bit about my setup here. I'm using Regal equipment, using a function generator, an arbitrary wave form generator, set to a frequency of one kilohertz. Start with amplitude of 500 millivolts, peak to peak. Uh, similar to, I guess, uh, the maximum that you get out of a guitar, um, we can explore that eventually, I guess, what the maximum we can get out of a guitar, but for now we're going to leave it at half a volt. And then the oscilloscope here is a Regal also. Um, channel 1, I'm going to be monitoring the output of the function generator. So as you can see, it's a sine wave. A little bit about the oscilloscope, if you're not familiar, familiar it has at least one electrical input and what it does essentially is it plots a time from left to right and that time base is variable and it has graduations so you can vary the amount of time um, from say uh, a few nanoseconds um, billions of a second up to um, dozens of seconds um, and that plots the time versus the amplitude. So it's looking at the voltage that's the signal, the voltage that's going into the oscilloscope, and it's plotting the voltage versus time. So as you see here, it's plotting, I've got it set up. So these probes are set up as, uh, you can change them between uh, uh, one to one or 10 to one. And right now I set it up to 10 to 1, but also set up the probe input as 10 to 1. Uh, so each graduation along the scale right now is set to 100 millivolts. And so you can see I've got this set to, uh, let's see here. Where's my position? There it is. 
So 500 millivolts peak to peak out, peak to peak. There's a bottom of one graduation. One, two, three, four, five. So five graduations, 100 times 100 millivolts is 500 peak to peak. To peak. So quick crash course on how that works. So what we're going to do is I'm going to inject this signal into the input of the amplifier and monitor at different points in the circuit to see, go right side up, so the input's here, so I'll be placing the signal here, they click E, yes, yes, signal comes in here and goes through the first part of the op amp, one device, it's a, a dual device in each package. That's essentially uh, provides a little bit of amplification. I'd have to look and see, calculate how much gain there is. I haven't done that yet. Um, but then it feeds um, the second half. So here's the second half of IC1. And it also feeds the first half of IC2. So IC2 is the clean channel. IC1 is the overdrive channel. So we're going to be focusing on overdrive channel today. All right, let's do this. So I connected function generator up to the input and then connected channel one of the oscilloscope and I got nothing, as you can see. And then I remembered, oh yeah, these types of input jacks, uh, they short to ground when nothing's connected, so got a little jumper for pedals. Let's stick it in there. Oops. And hey, look at that. Now I got a signal. Fantastic. All right, so of course, safety first. Safety glasses on. And this is not high voltage, so relatively safer than tube amps. However, you still don't want to touch this stuff that you see coming in, but it should be okay here, but you still don't want to touch anything unnecessarily. So keep safety in mind. All right, power on. Uh, oops, light there. All right, reconnect my signal. Okay, so we got signal going in, and both the first potentiometer and second one are turned all the way down. So let's poke around and see what we can do here. So I'm going to connect the ground to channel 2. I'm at 500 millivolts per division at the moment. Um, so what I want to do is verify, so I'm looking at the schematic now. I'll verify the output of IC1A. That doesn't tell me what pin it is. Uh, 3, 2, I'm guessing it's probably 1, knowing these. All right. So these ICs, uh, if you can see this, the end that is marked with uh, a divot and a little circle. That's the, uh, considered the, uh, I guess the end from which, from which everything is um, derived. And then this little divot here marks pin one. And then as you can see, so pin one, the signal on pin one matches the signal on pin two. Actually, that's interesting because I'm at. Oh, yeah. So there's a little gain on incoming. So I got 100 millivolts coming in on pin 3. And pin 1 output, 500 millivolts per division. Sorry. So coming in, 100 millivolts per division times 5 is 500 millivolts peak to peak. Output, we're at. 500 millivolts per division. So the first stage already amplifies and we're at 
5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So we're at 2.5 volts per division already, or 2.5 volts peak to peak already on the output. So that is, I'll show you the screenshot of the schematic. So that is coming out of IC1A, feeding both IC2A and IC1B. So we'll be focusing on IC1B at the moment. Um, let's look and verify um, output 7 on IC1B. I'll put pin 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And since I have it turned down, I should have all negative feedback, meaning that should be nothing. Right, so let's give it a little resistance. And if you can see the waveform, I'm already going way off scale on the oscilloscope, oscilloscope input. So let's make sure, yeah, we're selected to channel 2. I'm going to change the, not the time base, but the, the vertical scale. So now we're at 1 volt per division. Now I'm turning up the gain pot gain potentiometer, which is on this schematic marked as VR3. Turn it up, and as you can see, signal increases a lot. So one volt per division, double it to two. And as you can see, as I suspected, if you're looking at the bottom, look at the bottom of the sine wave versus the top. So the top still is its normal shape, but the bottom is starting to compress. And that is due to the feedback diode D12, which is 1N4148, which is the same as the other four that we're going to replace. So I'll likely replace that one too. So this one is stage one of the overdrive circuit. It is inducing what is called uh, asymmetrical clipping meaning that one side of the waveform is clipped off, but the other side is left alone. So what I think I'll do is, for this one, I will replace that diode with a germanium diode, and then I will also install another germanium diode um, in opposite polarity, and what that will do is it will also clip the top of the wave as well as the bottom. So that'll provide symmetrical uh, clipping, and that'll change the sound. Um, I, I expect it will make it sound a little more smooth, uh, but we'll find out. So that's interesting. So let's go to 5 volt per division. So I mean, I mean, I was barely turned up at all to like 2 or 3, so we're already clipping there. Heavy clipping, as you can see the signal increases a lot. 5 volts per division, hope you can see that. Now we're at 10 volts per division. And there, there we're maxed out. So actually there's, that's like 3 quarters of the potentiometer right there. And then full. So there's very little variation between, say about 3 quarters or 2 thirds to 100%. Um, so it'll be interesting too to see if we can modify the potentiometer resistance um, and maybe the component values to so that you get more of a linear adjustment over that entire range. It seems like most of the adjustment is within the first one half of the um, the value of the pot here. Okay. So you can see this, but I'll show you this uh, on the screenshot as well. So we just verified basically right here, which is the output of the first stage of the overdrive circuit. Right there. And that then goes through a potentiometer over to the second stage. Um, does have some feedback. Um, clipping looks like with the zener. Um, also sets the gain, um, but then the output we're going through, going through a 1k resistor, 
and then there's your uh, say hard clipping diodes going through another resistor through another pot so this is the volume so this thing has it's called a gain and a volume so uh, gain is here volumes here and then the output of that volume goes to another stage which is IC3 which I will replace uh, eventually but like I said right now we'll only do one and two uh, but what I'll do is we'll look at uh, say the input of the of that IC um, which based on this is pin 2 so let's try it also keep in mind there's a selector switch on here between between clean and dirty I've got it selected to clean uh, sorry dirty if I had it selected to clean it would be um, bypassing um, this feedback circuit and essentially then this would become uh, there wouldn't be any gain here and so it, 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 the design limits any noise when you've got the other channel selected. So right now we've got the dirty channel selected. Alright, so let's look at let's first look at the output of IC 2B, which is pin 7. All right, there's pin 7 there. Like I said, there you can see the clipping again. And then we'll move on to the input of the next IC, IC3, which is way over here, so I'm going to move the ground. And then the input is, uh, they're using the inverting input, which is pin 2, 1, 2, Oop. try not to short anything. All right, so right now I don't have anything until I, I still don't have anything. So what's the problem here? I see 3. I see one seven. Yep. I see two seven. That's what the one I didn't check yet. Okay, so take it back, we'll check I see two pin seven first. As you can see if I turn off the that channel enable switch goes from no signal to heavily clipped sine wave signal. Alright, so then pin 7 goes to R16. Where's R16? Which is a 1K. Alright, so one side of 1K. Alright, check this out. Okay, so you see the one side of the 1K resistor is essentially the same as the output, so it's the same point. Then if we go to the other side, now the amplitude is reduced. So, wow, that really clips it pretty hard. So the other side of the 1K is connected to the, the clipping diodes. All right. So the bigger that signal, the more it's going to clip. And you can see the amplitude doesn't get any higher now because um, the forward bias of those diodes is clipping off the maximum amplitude of the signal. So then R12, where's R12? Where is it? 
There it is. Our 12 one side versus the other side. All right, so we got a signal going through our 12. And again, our 12 is limiting it a bit. As we increase the gain of the input, it's really causing a lot of clipping. So on R12 to VR7. VR7. R32. I'm trying to find this stuff here. There's R32. So there is the signal for, and that's why we're not getting much of anything, because R32 is limiting, heavily limiting the input to IC3A. So that's interesting. So we can also play around there. Um, so we can, um, let's see. So what I'm going to need to do is, so that's coming off the potentiometer from the second stage, and then further limited, and then let's change the scale, whoops, that's the time base. Alright, so let's move on to the next step.